grand theater of royal commentary, we find ourselves once again witnessing a performance that would make even the most seasoned thespian blush. Our esteemed fantastic duo of creative storytelling, Rebecca English and Richard Eden, have graced us with their act, a dazzling display of hypocrisy, contradiction, and thinly veiled prejudice. After covering the Sussexes visit to Columbia and having the realization that these so-called journalists, whatever their writers say, is taken as gospel, just because they have the title of royal added to their job description, I promised myself to one thing, that ever so often I would respond to their fantasy storytelling, to have a counterpoint per se, to have a counterpoint and break that narrative that they've got and actually tell the truth. English and Eden have positioned themselves as arbitrators of royal propriety, yet their remarks week after week reveal a blatant disregard for the facts surrounding the Sussexes. So this is my re response, this is my counterpoint. And welcome, this is Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonia. It's great to have you here. Let's begin with their masterful deconstruction of the Sussexes' recent trip to Colombia. Oh, how they scoffed at the very notion of a vice president inviting guests based on a Netflix documentary she well, saw. What's it all about? It's, um, on the face of it, they were invited by the vice president of um, Colombia. And it, it's almost embarrassing to actually say this, but she, she said that she invited them because she saw them on Netflix and thought it would be nice. I mean, where do you stop? What did you know, she just invite the stars of a you know her favourite comedy or something? But well, they were obviously. <laughs> The indignity. Yet in their haste to mock, they conveniently overlooked the fact that Vice President Francia Marquez's invitation stemmed from a place of shared experience. Let me repeat that shared experience between her and Megan, and genuine interest in addressing global challenges. You missed it completely. But why let the facts interfere with a good narrative? Why? Why should we? Our dynamic duo prefers to paint, right? Paint this as a vanity project, completely disregarding the Archwell Foundation's ongoing work and the potential for meaningful cultural exchange. Why even bring that up at all? Fair and balanced? Oh my dear. Far from that. Now let's address the pièce de résistance, okay? Their critique of media access. Richard and Rebecca, whose stewards defenders of press freedom were aghast at the Sussex's decision to limit media presence. How dare they not invite the entire British press corps to scrutinize, criticize every single move they made? How dare they? Every single channel, the BBC, even ITV, even friendly, friendly media. Friendly media? Did you see the telegraph? What planet are you on? What have you smoked? Well, maybe, 
maybe you need to eat something, my dear. Because you're not making any sense. Yet in the same breath, they bemoaned the, 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 the propaganda produced by the chosen journalists. It's almost as if they have forgotten their own roles in the royal media circus. The irony is thick enough to cut with a knife when Rebecca compares this to North Korea, conveniently ignoring the Daily Mail's own questionable practices. And Rebecca mean honestly. Close to 90% of what you say is usually, well, a source really high up. A person who was not being sarcastic at all. He, he, this person had genuine um, um, questions about why were they there? Why were, why, why were they there? Why, 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 why were they there? Oh. Well, I was going to add to that, Richard, just to say that I was speaking with somebody very senior in more circles in recent days, and they said to me, Rebecca, genuine question. What, what did they hope to achieve by this? They weren't saying it with any sarcasm. They're like, because people are trying to work out. And I said, I think personally, and I don't have any with Harry and his team, uh, so I can't tell you what they think, but I think it's about relevancy. It's about desperately trying to establish the fact that they are still relevant people on the world stage. And much as Harry's railed against the whole way that the institution works, um, doing these kind of royal tour style things are the only thing he's ever known. So I think he's almost clinging onto it like a like a comfort blanket. But is, is that person Richard, darling? Was it Richard who tapped you and said, hey, um, are you saying anything as to why they were there? No? Okay. So what are you going to say? Oh, that's what you're going to say? Okay, 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 I'll play along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that it? Because, my dear, if we want to talk about North Korea and propaganda, should we, again, go and look at all of your reporting? Because most of this sensational stuff you say, you conveniently... You know, protect your... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. By inserting, well, a, a, a source high up. Well, a person in the household. Well, this person that was on the bus with me one point. Uh, well, you know, one time I was, at a, I was at a function at the Royal Palace and I got so tipsy. And then I ended up in like, I don't know, a bathroom or somewhere. And someone's kind of closet or something with, with a bunch of people. I don't quite understand what happened, darling. But, 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 but let me tell you, the Sussexes suck. They suck. They're awful people. Awful. I don't know. Harry... Harry is he's so treated so badly. He was he was he was given a plate. They placed it on the ground and, and 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 she was petting him like a dog, you see. And and I just looked at him and I thought, why did you go, Harry? I mean honestly, not even like the chef or whatever that, that person was. They didn't even speak to him at all. They just they just talked to Megan. It was like a Megan show. It's like it's like he was irrelevant. It was just like, oh my poor Harry, you know, my poor my poor Harry. He he just he just he just he he just took his pudding. You say he took his pudding and and and, and he put the pudding into his mouth and then and then he chewed and the pudding. Oh my dear Harry. Oh, my heart hurts. It hurts. Oh, why did he go? I, I, I was doing so much. I was doing, I was, I was doing, I was making sure I was appealing to him, you see. I, 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 I did cut my hair and I also, I, I bought new, 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 beautiful, beautiful tailored um, um, garments, you see. And, 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 and I was, I was, I was, I was just about to look so splendid that I would have been irresistible to him. Why did he go? I mean, why? Oh my goodness, my dear. Please, are you all right? Do you need like a break? How about a pill? Maybe you need to see someone, talk to someone. 
because I don't know. I'm almost worried about you. But then I would be, I would be lying, basically. Oh, let me rephrase that. A very well-placed source in the show did say to me that they were worried and also that <clears throat> I don't know how to say this but the well-placed source I mean this is a very important source said to me that you have a shrine of a Harry and then you have another thing with oh you don't I sh oh, no no don't continue no I'm just saying though a very well placed source told me this English and Eden's hypocrisy hypocrisy becomes even more apparent when you consider their selective reporting they conveniently ignore the fact that other royal figures, such as William and Catherine, have faced similar issues with staff retention. Issues that are downplayed or ignored entirely. As long as it fits into their narrative, right? Instead, they choose to frame the Sussexes as the villains, the villains of the story. So I don't understand how you're going to blame the Sussexes for household staff that is hired not by Prince Harry or Meghan, it's hired by the household. Now, they're having issues with what you folks are doing because you are relentlessly attacking them, right? It's become now unsafe. And if you don't believe me, I mean... Go ask the head of the, of the, of, of the, of the. Royal protection. Um, how would you characterize the threats that Meghan and Harry received? Well, disgusting and very real. I've talked publicly for many years about the threat of extreme right-wing terrorism in this country. I've often been misquoted as, as taking my eye off the ball, as though I think that that was the biggest threat. I've never called it the biggest threat but it was the fastest growing, you know, and my wonderful friend and counterpart at MI5 will tell you exactly the same thing. But when I started in CT in 2015... Counterterrorism. Counterterrorism. It was about 6% of our total workload. Certainly when I left 15, 16 months ago, it was over 20% of our workload. But there were many serious, credible threats against Meghan, were there, emanating from the far right? Absolutely. Country. If you'd seen the stuff that was written and you were receiving it, the kind of rhetoric that's online. If you don't know what I know, you would feel under threat all of the time. So you were convinced that there was a genuine threat to Meghan's life on a, you know, on more than one occasion, on several occasions. Absolutely. We had teams investigating it. People have been prosecuted for those threats. Well, there it is. Thank you, Neil Basu. I honestly, when this came out, this interview came out, I was so excited and happy because here's an official person saying what so many of us already knew was that kind of happening. And I, 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 I'm starting to think that the people that either needed to watch this or see this or listen to it have not. Or the minute the person or the, or, or the interviewers uses the name um, Meghan Markle or Prince Harry, they shut down or something. Because I don't understand how people can't make the, connect the dots that when you have a um, tabloid media press that consistently, every single day, the same drumbeat, this person is bad, this person is bad, this person, they're evil, they're evil, they're evil. They killed the queen, they killed the queen. All this nonsense that is said every single day for the last almost eight years. And not a thing has happened to any of these people. When Prince Harry says his wife is not secure in that country, he is 1000% correct. 
and even for him he needs to be very careful also because any person with just a slight little slight little twitch in their mental health and if they are an avid listener watcher of that stuff and still Rebecca English and Richard Eden and that whole party continue every single day every single day with the tabloids with the articles and always always not a bit of remorse about anything and I pray I pray that the good Lord Jesus that's all I'll say hola beautiful people just a quick break to say thank you to each and every one of you thank you for being here thank you for tuning in and thank you for your consistent and wonderful support i really 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 appreciate it if you're enjoying today's content or our, our conversation or discussion please consider showing the subscribe button some love just give it some love and while you're around that area thumbs up gets really jealous so if you can show thumbs up some love also so i had a conversation with the comment section and with the share and they're like we're not jealous we're fine we, do, we don't need no loving but you know what still give them some love okay so comment section give it some love share if you can give it some love and if you're feeling generous or in the spirit of generosity and you're able to donate to the channel small or big um it all matters i would really appreciate it and you can do that through becoming a member if you're able to or uh donation through super thanks and that's all for now folks thank you so very much and hope you enjoy what's left bye for now ciao 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 ciao, ciao, ciao. you continue to peddle lies and to continue to build hatred just because just because <laughs> this isn't about poor journalism it's about a calculated campaign to maintain certain image of the royal family one that is white traditional and unchallenged Meghan Markle, a biracial American woman who dares to speak out against injustice, is the antithesis of this image. And for that, she has been relentlessly targeted, abused. English and Eden have been key players in this smear campaign using their platforms to spread misinformation and stoke hatred. You see, the consequences of this are far reaching. The UK media distorted narratives are not confined to Britain. As I've said, they've been exported worldwide infiltrated international press. Then they turn around, reprint these biased reports as fact. Foreign media outlets further entrenched negative perceptions of the Sussexes, spreading misinformation on a global scale. This is a clear example of how Britain's tabloid machine has industrialized and globalize its campaign of abuse with Rebecca English and Richard Eden. Moreover, the ethical breaches by these so-called journalists go beyond their biased reporting. Prince Harry is currently suing the Daily Mail, which employs both English and Eden. He's suing them for alleged illegal surveillance tactics. This conflict of interest is never disclosed in the reporting. Further calling into question, 
the integrity of their work. Listen, English, Rebecca, has even been accused of paying private investigators to spy on Harry's former girlfriend, Chelsea Davy, a tactic that aligns with the tabloid long history of privacy invasion and unethical behavior. You see, Rebecca English and Richard Eden, they're not really journalists. They're not truly reporting on anything, really. They are enforcers of a toxic, outdated regime that cannot tolerate change. I'll say it a thousand times. They are active participants in a campaign of character assassination, one that seeks to uphold a narrative that marginalizes and vilifies those who challenge the status quo. Now, Bianca Betancourt, Bianca's inclusion in the Columbia visit should have been celebrated as a step towards more diversity and inclusive media coverage. Instead, Rebecca and Ricardo chose to mock her, revealing their true colors. Not like they weren't revealed before. But let's be clear. Betancourt's credentials and integrity far outshine those of her detractors. She represents the future of journalism, one that values truth, diversity, and social impact over sensationalism and deceit. So my dear, let's see what Bianca's CV looks like. She's a digital culture editor for Harper Bazaar. Editor, darling, editor. She's worked for Teen Vogue, Vox, Vice, Rolling Stones, The Washington Post. Oh, you two can just fantasize about that. Fantasize. But what are you left to write? You left to write your talents, my dear. Your talent is indicative of what you write for. You see, Bianca is the digital culture editor of Harper Bazaar. Also worked at Teen Vogue, Fox, Vice, Rolling Stone, The Washington Post, and there's a few more that I'm not mentioning right now. Because they're in Spanish and you wouldn't get it. So it's okay. But you see, talent gets to write and work at these places. These esteem institutions. You see, when you, your talent is not up to par, then you write for rags. Are you getting my drift here? So your talent matches uh, okay i don't need to repeat it are you sure all right okay she graduated from columbia college not columbia okay not the country from Colum C O L U M B I A. all right as i know you tend to confuse the two her degree is in broadcast journalism. Now, someone high up told me that you said that you may have a degree, or both of you may have degrees in broadcast journalism. Because if you do, I may ask you to go back and check out like what you've learned. And if you're still adhering to the ethics of journalism, 
Because I know some time has passed, you know? Maybe you need some refreshing. And she's bilingual. Spanish and English. Maybe that's one of the reasons she was picked also. Since they were going to Spanish-speaking country. Who knows? Who knows? I don't, but I don't go around like... <laughs> inventing things out of my earth. I just don't. <sighs> Look, in the end, what we're left with is a royal forest. Two so-called seasonal journalists so caught up in their own narrative that they've lost sight of the very principles they claim to uphold. They rail against media manipulation while engaging in it themselves. They decry the lack of access while ignoring their own conflict of interest. In the grand tapestry of royal reporting, Rebecca English and Richard Eden have woven themselves a tale so full of holes, it's a wonder it doesn't fall apart at the seams. But then again, Perhaps that's the point, to keep us all distracted with the spectacle while the real stories unfold just out of sight. In the world of royal commentary, all that glitters is not gold. Sometimes it's just fool's gold, polished to a high shine by those who profit from its luster. The British media's war on the Sussexes is not just an attack on two individuals. It's an attack on the values they represent. Values that threaten the traditional power structure upheld by the likes of Rebecca English and Richard Eden. It's a story about the broader dynamics of power, privilege, and race within the British media and beyond. Rebecca English and Richard Eden are not merely reporting on royal family. They are actively shaping the public's perception of it, using their platform to reinforce a narrative that marginalizes those who dare to be different. Rebecca and Richard are not just ethically questionable, they're dangerous. By perpetuating falsehoods and, and, and stoking hatred, they contribute to a climate of hostility that has real world consequences. Meghan and Harry have been subjected to relentless abuse, much of it fueled by the very narrative that English and Eden promote. The fight for truth and justice is ongoing and it is up to us to ensure that the voices of those who challenge the, 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 the status quo are not drowned out by these cacophony of lies. In Spanish at a Colombian festival this past weekend. But exactly what is this festival? Welcome to the Petronio Alvarez Music Festival, the biggest celebration of Afro-Colombian culture from the Pacific coast. El Petronio, as we call it, is a vibrant showcase of traditional music, fashion, and gastronomy, representing about 50 towns from the Colombian Black Pacific coast. It's like a big family reunion held every year on the third week of August. 
At the heart of this festival is a music competition between over 40 folkloric groups competing in four categories. There's a reason why Colombia is known as the land of a thousand rhythms. So grab your panuelo and dance the night away to the sounds of the marimba. The festival proves that El Pacifico's music and culture have been thriving for centuries and shows how black and proud the Afro-Colombian community has always been. Will you be attending next year? Have you seen this video of Megan speaking Spanish at a Colombian festival this past weekend? Hospitalidad increíble! But exactly what is this festival? Welcome to the Petronio Alvarez Music Festival, the biggest celebration of Afro-Colombian culture from the Pacific coast. El Petronio, as we call it, is a vibrant showcase of traditional music, fashion, and gastronomy, representing about 50 towns from the Colombian Black Pacific Coast. It's like a big family reunion held every year on the third week of August. At the heart of this festival is a music competition between over 40 folkloric groups competing in four categories. There's a reason why Colombia is known as the land of a thousand rhythms. So grab your panuelo and dance the night away to the sounds of the marimba. The festival proves that El Pacifico's music and culture have been thriving for centuries and shows how black and proud the Afro-Colombian community has always been. Will you be attending next year? Have you seen this? Is Harry offering the king an olive branch or is there something else going on? What have the king and Catherine been doing together this week? What is Prince Andrew's strange new hobby? And is Meghan Markle trying to copy Princess Diana? Handbag. Yes, it's the Aspinall handbag. I think uh, Catherine's favourite one is the Mayfair Midi. And they're quite classic, aren't they? They're those beautiful sort of square handbags. And I think they're quite useful for female members of the royal family because I think they communicate with their bags. You might know better than me, but, you know, there used to be that old thing that if the Queen wanted somebody moved on, she'd move her handbag into the other hand. Stopping that way. I don't think they do, but I mean, oh, handbags are, disappointing. As, as, um, as Charlotte says, part of, especially for, for female members of the royal family, family it's, um, it, it's part of the uniform. Don't forget, Queen Elizabeth had a Lorna handbag bags yes. that were well over £2,000 a pop. A whole handbag royal special, I think, very soon. Well, speaking of inspiration and fashion, Claire Chisotti, who is from the Royals team online, pulled together the times when Meghan Markle seemed to be making an effort to echo the style choices of her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana. So we have, drum roll please, the mum jeans and white shirt made really famous by Diana, which Meghan was spotted wearing. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Royal Commentary Circus, where the main act features none other than Rebecca English and Charlotte Griffith. This week's performance is a masterclass in double standards and innuendos with a generous helping of hypocrisy as always. Our esteemed commentators have once again taken aim at the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Remember the people they don't care about, the people who are irrelevant? Uh, somehow they manage to be in their segments every single week. Painting Megan as the villainous puppet master and Harry as the helpless, infantilized prince. The narrative is as tired as it is predictable. Harry, who has repeatedly stated that his family and Megan is his priority, is portrayed as a man torn from his roots, a spare, quote unquote, in more ways than one. I am not inventing this, folks. Consider their treatment of the Sussexes. Recent trip to Columbia, English and Griffith, Dismiss it as a faux royal tour. I don't even care because they're the ones who called it that. And now they're the ones who are criticizing it because it's called that. You bunch of idiots. Ah, buy a vowel or something. All the while, waxing lyrical about the barmoral gathering of the rest of the royal family. They, <laughs> the double standards is glaring. When the Sussexes engage in public endeavor, it's a desperate bid for relevance. When the rest of the family does it, the same thing, it's a heartwarming display of unity. <laughs> I don't... Ay, ay, ay. 
Then there, and then there, there is there's a matter of Megan's investment in a handbag company. Our commentators suddenly became fashion critics, extolling the virtues of British brand favored by the royals. <laughs> the thinly, and I mean really thin, the thinly veiled attempt to troll Megan is as transparent as it is petty. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm giggling, but <sighs> is this journalism, folks? or merely gossip with a royal seal of approval. The piece de resistance, however, is their discussion of Harry's memoir, Spare, in a stunning display of <laughs> connective dissidence, they manage to simultaneously condemn the book's existence and lament the lack of a new, new material in the paperback edition. They criticize Harry for not updating it while in the same breath expressing relief that they, that they, <laughs> that there wouldn't be more negative content. Oh man. One wonders if they've considered the possibility that perhaps, just perhaps, Harry has said his peace and wishes to just move forward. And when he feels like saying more, he will. The lack of journalistic integrity is staggering. Facts are twisted, context is ignored, and speculation is presented as truth. The constant use of unnamed sources and royal insiders allows for, for, for the spread of unverified information without consequences. This is not reporting. It's, 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 it's rumor mongering dressed up in royal robes. Let us not forget the real world consequences of this relentless negativity. Prince Harry has explicitly stated that he fears for his wife's safety in the UK due to the hatred stir up by such commentary. It takes but one unhinged individual fueled by this toxic narrative to turn into a dangerous, dangerous action. Yet these commentators bitterly continue their character assassination, seemingly oblivious to the potential ramifications of their words. What we're witnessing here is not journalism. It's not even good gossip. It's a carefully constructed narrative designed to elevate some royals while denigrating others. It's a game, a game of favorites played out in public on a stage with real people's lives. Grow up. What is wrong with you people? So to Rebecca English and Charlotte Griffith, listen, folks, I know nothing is going to change. But before you cast aspirations on the Sussexes for controlling their narrative, perhaps take a long, hard look in the mirror. Your hypocrisy is glaring. And it's time for a reckoning. Gosh. The public deserves better than this circus of misinformation and innuendos. God save the truth. Thank you all. Thank you so very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, being part of my journey. I love being part of this community and I love the things that we're able to do and um, the way we're able to help each other and uplift each other. Thank you so very much. I don't want this, 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 this episode to pass without, as we wrap things up, for us to have gratitude and give thanks for all the wonderful things that we have in our lives, even the things that are challenging, to give thanks for them. And for us to pray for 
a wonderful friend and 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 you know sort of <laughs> the 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 guy with the lighthouse that so many of us who um started out with our channel and 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 are building it slowly little by little i know i for, i turned to um baron and and asked for advice and 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 all of that and um i will forever be um grateful um for his words and and everything that 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 he has done um we know that he's not feeling too too great and um i would like to suggest as music takes us out to just wherever you are just close your eyes if you wish to do so and just let's say a prayer um for his speedy recovery for him to feel better and for all of you each and every one of you for whatever challenges circumstances physical mental spiritual that you may be um, dealing with may we be healed may we be healed thank you so very much every thought you know the things i've done You know my struggle, my lonesome, wretched heart. You know the things I've done. It must be love. I'm running